Here's another great question. Uh, what should keyboardists have in their equipment bag? Okay, so if you're going to start doing gigs on the, playing with your keyboard, which I hope you do, it's a great experience, what things should I buy or ask my uh, significant other to buy me to put in my gig bag? These are must-haves. And, you know, there's, there's always uh, things you can add to this list or take away. It's up to you, but I want to give, give everyone out there just some basics that uh, I feel in my experience will help you when you're out there gigging. Uh, because there's there's nothing worse to get to a gig, have something uh, go wrong, and you're not prepared. Okay, this could really impact the gig and your performance in a negative way. Uh, so these are the things that I always make sure I have in my gig bag uh, before the gig. So first off is a surge protector. Uh, there's a lot of great ones out there. Now what a surge protector does is before you plug in your instruments, be it your keyboard or your amp or anything, m into a wall at a nightclub or wherever, and sometimes those uh, nightclubs uh, or a generator at a festival, they have dirty power and there are surges in the power. Now what that means, in a nutshell, if there's a surge and there's not a surge protector, your keyboard's just plugged in direct into that, you could actually uh, fry your equipment. It could fry the motherboard. It could basically kill it, okay? And good luck trying to get the money from uh, the promoters or the club owners. Hey, too bad. Okay, so a surge protector can, can pretty cheap. Okay, pretty pretty cheap. And if there is a surge, what will happen? There'll be a little fuse inside that surge protector, and that'll pop or burn out. And uh, that's like twenty-five to fifty cents. It's not very expensive, and your gear gear will be protected. Okay, so uh, or you can reset the surge protector. So make sure you have that first and foremost. That's why I'm spending a little bit more time on that piece of gear. Uh, I've been experiences where uh, a keyboard player, we were playing in a band together, we were both sitting in, I had my surge protector, and the guy didn't have one, and I asked him, hey, would you like to just plug into mine, you know, you'd like, it's a multi-plug, but it's surge protection, and he said, no, I don't need, I don't need your surge protector, and when you know it, we're playing at a festival into uh, portable power, and there was a surge, and his keyboard, which was very nice also, it, it was fried, it was dead. Okay, and mine, only thing that happened to mine is the surge protector went off, power went off, I just uh, reset it, and my keyboard was up and going. So uh, that was, that's, I learned my lesson a long time ago. Uh, the next thing is, of course, we have our surge protector, so we have to get to a power source, and sometimes the power source is a little, is a little far from us, so therefore, I always keep a 25-foot or a 50-foot extension cord in my bag, okay? This has helped me out countless times just your standard orange extension cord it's just nothing that special because it's just going to have an extension from the wall uh the wall power and that's going to go into your surge protector to power that and you know i can't say enough that's great to have now remember the next thing is audio cables uh keyboards most keyboards 99.9 .9 percent of the keyboards are are stereo keyboards, which mean they have a left output and a right output. So that means you need two cables, two cables. Now, if you're not able to run two cables, you can run one, uh, usually the left, and that'll make it mono. But keep in mind, sometimes on many keyboards, there's stereo effects going on, okay? Stereo effects going on, and so you're not going to get the full effect. So I always have my two audio cables in there. Now, that being said, and, and and if I have multiple keyboards, if I if I run one keyboard, it's two cables I have in my bag. If I run f two keyboards, four key four cables, three keyboards, how many? Three times two, six cables. Okay, so I always make sure and have my cables. Now that being said, no matter how good the cables are that you have, keyboard uh, uh, cables bust. Cables uh, uh, go out. Okay, so therefore the next thing you need to have in your bag is extra audio cables. Now on audio cables, uh, what I choose for my for my own setups is I always choose a, a nice premium brand. I choose something that has a lifetime guarantee. Um, I usually don't use the ones that are freebies or thrown in the box. I always, you know, spend a little bit of money. Okay, spend a little bit of money and get the ones that have a lifetime guarantee. So that way, when they go bad, which uh, it's not very often, you know, if you wrap your cables and you take care of them properly, uh, you can easily get 10 years or more out of them. I, I have some cables that uh, I, I can't even remember when I purchased them, okay? It's over 10 years. So 
keep plenty of audio cables in there for your rig and then uh, extra audio cables. And if, if you just use black audio cables, they're all the same look, get some colored tape and put colored tape over certain of them so you can tell what's what. Uh, the next thing is your sustain pedals and your volume pedals. Uh, keyboards need sustain pedals or, or volume pedals to adjust the volume so you don't have to take your hand uh, off the keyboard plane and adjust the volume switch. You can just use the volume uh, with your foot. So keep an extra uh, sustain pedal in there. I, I like to do that and the volume pedal is cool too. Now the next thing uh, is a mixer. Some type of mixer to mix your keyboard rig sound, your sound, for you and then have a way to send it to the front of the house. Now I'm going to cover this more in a, a later video because too many times keyboard players always get messed around in the whole house mix and here's what I mean by that and a lot of you guys at gig will understand this. A keyboard player he'll bring his amp, bring a nice amplifier and your amp is meant usually to, to for you to use as a monitor but what ends up happening is the person, the guy that's running the mix out there he just says, I don't have an extra spot for you in the mixer, so just turn up your amp and I'll adjust you. Well, yeah, but you're fighting with a guitar player that has a big, nice killer amplifier, and then you're, you're, you're fighting with two you know, big speakers on either side of the stage, and you're going to have to turn up your speaker really loud to even be heard, which usually you won't, okay? Uh, and so what you're going to do is you're going to damage your hearing, which doesn't get any better once it's damaged, and then also you're going to damage your speaker. Okay, and then no one's going to hear you anyway. So I always say get some kind of mixer, and this is especially important if you're running multiple keyboards, some kind of mixer, and you'll have part of the mixer go out to your amplifier so you can have your own separate mix, and then you'll have another section, another output from the mixer go to the front of the house or the snake so they can have their own mix. Okay, so uh, I'll go into more detail uh, for you guys on that in a later video, but have a mixer, okay? Keyboard guys, uh, mixers can be anywhere from a hundred bucks, uh, you know, on up. But just get something that that covers your rig, okay? That's something good to have. Um, the next thing is a flashlight, some kind of flashlight, and they have all those little, those new little flashlights that are really cool. Because let's face it, a lot of times when we're setting up or breaking down, it's dark. We can't see what's going on. We're messing with dark keyboards. We're messing with uh, dark black cables. And it's, sometimes it could be a rat's nest. Or we're looking at, in our gig bag to find something that we need now. So make sure you have a flashlight always in your bag. Uh, the next thing is gaffer's tape. Just the nice uh, sticky tape, the big tape, that you can tape your cables down. Uh, usually the cables inside your rig that are in your general area, not so much, but the ones that, that go to the snake or maybe go to the front of the house from your mixer, uh, you sometimes you have to tape those down. And that's, uh, that's important because what will happen, someone's going to trip on those cables and they're going to fall or worse, they're going to trip on those cables and they're going to take down your rig, snap your cables which if they did that, hopefully you have extra ones, or it's going to snap out of your keyboard or whatever. So that's that's good to have is gaffer's tape. Okay, And the last thing is have a couple of extra power cables. Okay, The power cables that you plug into your conditioner. Okay, Because sometimes those go out and, or they get lost. Just a couple of them. Okay, so there, here's a couple. So there are some of the things that I really recommend uh, that you have in your gig bag. And this is for keyboard guys. DJ guys will be different. Guitar players will be different. You know, every instrumentalist will be different. And I encourage all of you guys to go th through, go through what you play and go down the line and think, what do I need or what should I have in case of an emergency and so I look like a professional and not like an amateur because there's nothing worse than someone goes hey you have an extra cable I, I forgot mine or or whatever so be pro be proactive and make sure you have these things surge protector uh, an extension cord audio cables extra audio cables uh, sustain pedals volume pedals a mixer for your mix um, a flashlight, gaffer's tape, and an extra power cable. And like I said, these are just a couple of suggestions. There could be less, there could be more, but it's up to you. Look at your rig and decide what do I need to keep in my bag just in case of an emergency. All right, I hope this helps you guys out. Take care.